Thank you very much, President. I must begin my remarks by thanking my colleagues for their engagement and for the way they entered thoroughly into the spirit of compromise that has enabled us to have such a positive and wide-ranging report to vote on tomorrow. As a former professor of green economics, I'm delighted to see that this agenda now has almost universal support, not only in the Parliament, but also from the Commission, who have made this a priority agenda, as well as from world leaders, especially President Macron of France. This indicates that the sustainable finance agenda has moved beyond the realm of partisan discussion. It is not the property of any political faction, and it also shows that protecting the health and vitality of the planet we depend on is a cause that transcends normal political differences. While we may continue to debate about how banks should be regulated and what is the appropriate level of profits for enterprises, there is no longer any argument about the fact that we need to embark urgently on a transition to a sustainable economy and that finance offers a powerful tool to accelerate that transition. The urgent need to respond to the threat from climate change has led to innovation in the field of sustainable finance in different EU member states. The French law of disclosure, German leadership in the field of public investment in the energy transition, the Bank of England's timely action in encompassing the threat of financial stability from stranded assets, the Swedish FSA's ambitious agenda to integrate sustainability into its daily work, and the consideration of the threat to pensions and insurance from the tragedy of Horizons by the Netherlands. The aim of the European Parliament should be to encourage a race to the top on sustainable development, to take the best from this innovation across our Union and to combine it into minimum standards for all, guiding investment to ensure a just and rapid transition towards a sustainable economy and society. The sustainability transition is, as its name suggests, a dynamic environment. This is true of the hugely exciting technological innovation as engineers and designers respond to the sustainability imperative. And so it needs to be in terms of how we define and measure sustainability. This is why our report takes a different stance from the somewhat static taxonomy proposed by the Commission. Our proposal would be for something that time limits the value of different assets based on their sustainability potential measured by already existing indicators. This would allow investors to shift their asset holdings gradually through time and would enable an orderly transition away from unsustainable investments. The systemic risk posed by stranded carbon assets could thus be avoided, an important first step towards sustainable finance. But we also need to eliminate other stranded assets from investment portfolios. My report recommends extending the stranded assets concept to include fundamental ecological systems and services. So if an investment in intensive agriculture causes soil loss or the death of pollinators, it too should be considered a stranded asset. When it comes to sustainable finance, my report makes clear that we look to our own institutions particularly the ECB and the European Investment Bank, to set an example and to rise to the challenge of the Paris Agreement. This must mean an end to any investment that locks us into fossil fuel infrastructure and the inclusion of ESG goals in the ECB's investment policy. We welcome the excellent work of the Commission's expert group on sustainable finance and applaud its level of ambition. Our report lends political support to their recommendations and we seek to convey to the Commission and Council our firm belief that the citizens of the EU look to them to show global leadership on this agenda. Finally, but crucially, we need to hold the line as politicians as those who will lose value as we move towards sustainability seek to undermine our resolve because oil will always be able to move vehicles and coal will always be able to drive turbines. And for this reason, we, the politicians, are deciding that these fossil fuels will lose their value because the survival of our planet depends upon it. Future generations require us to stand firm and united to ensure that we use the power of finance to protect their future.